March 6, 2019, darkest day in NXT history so far. Because, yes, tonight is NXT ta- NXT's proper bill towards NXT TakeOver Brooklyn and uh, New York. But everything we see tonight and we see next week absolutely means nothing. The biggest story coming out of tonight, today, is nothing that happens on this show tonight, which is all four first round matches of the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic, which makes this show an hour, a little bit over an hour, I think it went an hour and 17, 18 minutes. But tonight's show is pretty much just overshadowed by the unfortunate news that we all feared. We all feared this was going to happen. We all feared what was going to go down. And we all feared that something was going to be, like, we were hoping, just so hoping, that this would not be as bad as it's going to be. The Wrestling Observer's Dave Meltzer reported on Tuesday night that the reigning NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa is getting neck surgery, and and WWE has confirmed this will be happening tomorrow. And is expected to be out for an extended period of time. The match with Gar- Gargano planned for NXT TakeOver New York is effectively off, and it's all but certain that Chopper will have to vacate the NXT Championship. Meltzer notes in his report about 10 minutes after the uh, 10 minutes into the audio of the uh, of the show that it was unknown. It was known that Chopper would be out following WrestleMania weekend, and that he would try to work through that point. However, Meltzer speculated that the situation with Chopper's neck over the past week must have deteriorated to the point where surgery could no longer be delayed. Stories have emerged over the previous weeks that Chopper had been pulled from a handful of other outside bookings due to injury reasons. Meltzer isn't sure the specific nature of Chopper's injury, but notes that depending on his procedure, recovery time could take 6 to 14 months. As for TakeOver New York and the championship, it remains to be seen that the new direction NXT will be forced to go into. This is absolutely terrible. This is devastating. Me, you, and everybody else who is an NXT fan, an NXT lifer, who's been watching this NXT, who's been watching NXT since it's been on the network, or if you're like me, who was watching NXT on Daily Motion when it was on, not on, when the network didn't exist yet, and you had to sit there and find ways to watch NXT. I watched not every episode, but I started watching it when Big E was champion, when he was doing the five, and moved on to the network and started watching from there. I've watched every single takeover. Most episodes of NXT, there were a couple during the down period where it was like, eh, I can miss this. And of course, most of the aftermath shows from NXT TakeOvers because there are absolutely nothing shows. This has been, this, this, this feud between Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa has been the biggest feud in all of NXT history. This has been going on and has been building for two years almost, for a year and some change. It's uh, it's almost capsing off to its two year anniversary when this year, this feud started. Now this feud, what it like? Ch- Chompa, this is not his first injury in NXT. He had tore his ACL right before his match with uh, before the match with DIY versus the Authors of Pain, in which Tommaso Chompa got turned on Johnny Gargano at the end of the NXT Takeover Chicago. And I say that that. Injury was a blessing in disguise because if it wasn't for that injury, this feud would have been over back in 2017, 2018. WrestleMania 33 or 34 would have been the conclusion of this feud. And I just think that the fact that Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa was not, their feud wouldn't have been as good then as it was for all of 2018 and going into 2019. You had Drew McIntyre make his return. You had um, Alistair Black make his debut. Um, Andrade Cien Armas started becoming into his own. Adam Cole in the Undisputed Era made their the presence known at the end of 2017. The Gargano Ciampa feud just would have been out of place, in my opinion, in 2017. It felt right that John, that it took it like it gave it gave Tommaso Ciampa the ability to sit back and build up the character that he's been sitting back injured, like, and the hate that he's had for Gargano festering inside of him, eating him alive inside, that on one of, on the biggest night in Gargano's career at the time, him attempting to win the NXT Championship from Andrade C. and Armas at TakeOver Philly in January of 2018, that, that was the night he decided to strike and, like, and remind Johnny Gargano that, hey, motherfucker, I'm still here. And you may have forgotten about me, but I haven't forgot about you. And then it just kept building. Chompa cost um, Gargano his career in NXT for about a month. 
They had an excellent match at NXT TakeOver New Orleans. One a great match at NXT TakeOver Chicago 2, where this all started. And then NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, which was supposed to be a triple threat match with Aleister Black, ended up becoming a um, singles match due to an injury, which they turned into a great storyline with Johnny Gargano eventually being the attacker of Aleister Black. Everything was going to culminate in Johnny Gargano turning, like, Tommaso Chomper in him, having this run in the, in the uh, return of DIY in the Dusty Goats Tag Team Classic. I don't need spoilers, but I don't know, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not an idiot, and you and anybody else should not be an idiot. If you've been following this entire story, you know, quite obviously, outside of tonight, what's going to happen next week, that Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Chomper are not winning their semifinals match. Johnny Gargano is going to, like, like, Tommaso Chop is going to turn on Gargano again, or try to, if that's what happens. And Gargano and him are going to end up set, setting up the stage for the NXT Championship match, which now is not going to happen. The biggest thing about this is we're not going to get the conclusion. We have never, like, the wrestling gods do not want this feud to end properly in NXT. This feud was supposed to end at TakeOver New York. Gargano was supposed to win the NXT Championship, and the Tommaso Ciampa, who's been injured, probably from what this timetable sounds like, right before NXT TakeOver um, Phoenix, when he took on Aleister Black, or at NXT TakeOver Phoenix, he got his neck hurt, one of those two. So, Tommaso, and the biggest thing that I have to take out of this is, they knew he was, like, Triple H and his crew knew that Tommaso Ciampa was injured. Why didn't he relay this to Vince McMahon? Or it's like this is this is the problem with that lack of communication. Vince McMahon, one of the top guys from NXT, he had to talk to somebody at the performance center, had to talk to Matt Bloom, Triple H, or somebody letting and somebody had to let Vince McMahon know that this guy is injured and bringing him up is a bad idea. Maybe they would have had this thing booked to where he only wrestles. The two matches that they do for the build towards NXT TakeOver New York, this match and the next one. And then he doesn't wrestle again until we get to TakeOver New York with the hope that this match could still happen. But no, he comes to Monday Night Raw, has a match with The Revival, has a match with The Bar on SmackDown. Damn near injures himself on his other not hurt knee, or previously hurt knee. Which would have made things even worse because imagine this neck injury he has and break like tearing an ACL or something would have put him out for it would have put him out about the same. I think he would have been like, but having to have surgery on his neck and then go in and have surgery on his um, knee would have just been devastating for the guy. But this absolutely fucking sucks. Tommaso Ciampa has been the best heel in all of WWE. One of the best goddamn heels in all of professional wrestling. I mean, I think Sammy Callahan in 2018 was about on par with him. If you had to look at the best heels in wrestling overall, I think you put Sammy Callahan and Tommaso Ciampa neck and neck with each other. They were, I think, the best two, the best heels in their promotions, plain and simple. But now comes the question, what do they do? Will Tommaso, because Tommaso Ciampa is going under the knife tomorrow. Will we see, will Tommaso Ciampa be at NXT's next set of tapings, which will be next week? Because they, this list was a three week set of tapings. Will he be at the tapings that they're going to have next week? He'll be a week removed from surgery. Will he be cleared to be able to come to the, um, performance to the thing and cut a promo, say what he has to say about being injured, or will they just have William Regal show up in the middle of the ring with the, championship and talk about what happened and what they're going to do next. If this was the main roster when it comes to this championship vacation, the vacating championship, I would be worried that they would just slap some kind of four-man tournament together and they would just not make it unimportant. Nobody would know, like, I would, I would just, I don't know what they're going to do. But if it was the main roster, I would be worried of how they would put this together and how they would put a bunch of slubs in there and make it to, like, we saw what happened when Roman Reigns had to de- vacate the Universal Championship. Vince McMahon went straight back to Brock Lesnar. He told Braun Strowman, I don't trust you, so I'm not going to put you, I'm not going to give you the title. We're going right back to Brock Lesnar. SmackDown, like, Monday Night Raw has suffered since Roman Reigns lost the title, like, was forced to vacate the title. And I just have a feeling going into WrestleMania, Brock Lesnar is walking out as Universal Champion for the simple fact is, Vince McMahon wants to put 
the title back on Roman Reigns. When we get to Saturday's Unscripted, because we will have a fast lane with predictions on Friday, I am going to talk about and give my reason why Vince McMahon cannot book Roman Reigns the same as he did before. But getting back to this, since this is NXT and after what happened with Aleister Black going into NXT TakeOver, um, TakeOver Brooklyn, Brooklyn 4 where he was supposed to be that triple threat match and he didn't get to do this because of a, torn, a, a messed up groin, they came up with a beautiful storyline and gave us some great television, great NXT television for the tail end of 2018. But I don't know what they do here. This is one of those that I can I trust Triple H. I trust his team of Shawn Michaels and Mike and Matt Bloom and everyone else who was down there to come up with a excellent idea of what they can do. But I just I don't know. This is something that's really hard to do. Because honestly, in my opinion, it feels like they're going to have to put Adam Cole in this position to face Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano is not going to win the NXT Championship like he was destined to do. It feels like this way, this this taking this feud and killing it because this feud's dead, plain and simple, and it sucks. This feud's dead because I feel like they were going to have Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa feud in NXT, and then they would have been at WrestleMania teaming together for a match. For the Raw Tag Team Titles or the SmackDown Tag Team Titles, and that's not going to happen now. What does this put Johnny Gargano on the main roster? Also, because Tommaso Ciampa's out, and Johnny Gargano hasn't been seen on TV outside of a spot where he was in his suit in a like a a, a suit coat, t- black T-shirt and like black pant, black slacks for Big Flair's birthday party. He was supposed to wrestle last week. On Raw, on SmackDown against Cesaro, but that got canceled, and we had the Hardy Boys come back. He hasn't been seen since this whole entire injury, this injury problem for Tommaso Ciampa has happened. Is it just Alistair Black and Ricochet on the main roster now? Is Johnny Gargano back in, back down in the back down in NXT by himself? Man, I don't know what to do, what what to say. And WWE's got a lot to think about. They have about a week. They have about a week, and it's, at least it's a week, to figure out what they're going to do different and what they're going to do. This NXT TakeOver New York is supposed to be the big. It has to be the biggest NXT TakeOver of all time. They moved it to Friday to not so they didn't have anyone compatting, like watching the G1 Supercard over them or the G1 Supercard being sold out and for Madison Square Garden, and they're in this bigger building because the Barclays Center is definitely bigger than Madison Square Garden, if, I, if I'm correct. But we're in the Barclays Center, and we're not. We sold like half of what what Madison Square Garden did. Vince McMahon doesn't want that type of thing to be done, and also Triple H, with his his competitive pride, doesn't want to people to leave the leave New York not talking about NXT over the G One SuperCard, and with the fact that they're on Friday now, this has got to be a big show, and this is going to be the biggest show in NXT history. It's still probably going to be. But honestly, I don't know what they're going to do now. This, this, this is this is devastating. Absolutely devastating. I trust Triple H, and we'll have to just wait and see what happens in two weeks' time. We did have a match announced though for two weeks' time, as Donovan Dajakovic will take on Keith Lee in a rematch of last week, which ended in a no contest. If I'm correct, that was last week. Yes, it was. So I don't the lim- I don't remember it. I don't. Believe they're changing the stipulation, making it a no countout match or anything, but I feel like the this should be a hell of a match. What they did last week was fucking amazing, but it's uh, Monday, NXT. It's going to it, like NXT Takeover Brook, um, New York is going to suffer. I don't know how bad it's going to suffer, but I think the grandstanding moment, the grand, the great moment, the feel good moment of NXT Takeover Brook of New York has been taken from us. Johnny Gargano winning the NXT Championship, I think, is not a possibility now. Especially if he's definitely moving up to the main roster. This was supposed to be his moment. This was supposed to be him vanquishing the guy who has been in his head for two years almost. The guy had, who has cost him his career in NXT for about a month when he tried to take the title from... When he was going after the title one last time against Andrade Cien Almas on NXT TV. And Ciampa just took that crutch and nailed him in the back. He pestered and got after 
John, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, even going to Tommaso Ciampa's house and pestering him until he got a non-sanctioned match for NXT TakeOver New Orleans, in which he won in one of the most brutal matches in NXT. And all of it was supposed to lead to this coming April, and that's gone. And by the time Tommaso Ciampa is back, how do you pick this back up? I don't know. Where will Tommaso Ciampa land when he gets back? Will he be back in NXT so he can be acclimated? A 6 to 14 month window. And this is the thing. It's 6 to 14 months. But Jason Jordan had just got, like, is still out with a neck injury. Tommaso Ciampa might not wrestle again. That's another thing we have to look at. Yeah, he may be done. He, he, he might be done. That's the sad part is. They say 6 to 14 months, but that doesn't mean anything. This could be one of those things where it could be he gets, he, like, the, the next injury doesn't go right or something else. And his condition never improves enough to be able to wrestle again. And Tommaso Ciampa is no longer able to wrestle. And that'll fucking suck too. I mean, Jay, like I said, Jason Jordan is not, has not wrestled since February of 2000, has not been a part of anything since February of 2018 when he was suffering with a neck injury. They sent him, they sent him off to get neck surgery and he's been producing and being working creative team since. And it's, Scary to know that we may not see Tommaso Ciampa wrestle again. This is absolutely the worst thing that could ever happen. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this because this is absolutely devastating. And yes, Tommaso Ciampa could be back in 6 to 14 months, but with neck injuries, you just don't know. Paige took a, had, had to take a year off because of a neck injury. She came back, one bad bump, and she was done. Her neck is so screwed up. If you watch that, um, chron that, um, that WWE Chronicle, I think it was, of Paige. I think it was Paige. I think it was Chronicle. Yeah. WWE Chronicle of Paige. And how they showed the highlight of, like, showed the match where she got kicked in the back. And then she was just, like, she couldn't do anything else. And then she went to the doctor. And it's like, even with the surgery, she's not going to be able to wrestle again. Her neck is that screwed up. This could be the same case with Tommaso Ciampa. We just don't know. This is, this is something that is very disturbing. It, it sucks. I hope Tommaso Ciampa has a speedy recovery. I hope Tommaso Ciampa fights back and gets back here. And we can hopefully see him back in either NXT, Raw, or SmackDown, whatever they want to do. But this fucking sucks. I don't know what else to say about it. And watching tonight's match, anybody who's been on this emotional roller coaster ride since the night these two broke up and Tim Tommaso Ciampa threw him into that LED board and then put him through the announce table or I take like took the not like took t t Johnny Gargano and jumped off the announce table with a white noise through another table. If you've been here since day since that day, or even when they were the tag team champions when they were facing or when they won the titles from the revival and everything, um let me know how you feel. Let me know what you think that this conclusion is probably never going to happen. The big story, and this is what sucks, this is the one thing that sucks about long-term booking nowadays. Injuries happen a lot more. We're going to talk about something that, uh, on Saturday too, about why the Raw Women's Championship match is a triple threat now. And the reason why Dave Meltzer comes out and say why it is, and I call bullshit on it, but we'll talk about it then. But yeah, long-term booking is hard to do in wrestling, especially in WWE, because their injury rate is so high. Seth Rollins was supposed to keep the WWE Championship going into Survivor Series in 2015, and he ended up getting injured weeks beforehand. And that killed whatever they were going to do. It's just, this is the problem. This thing has been building for two years, almost. And now it's not going to happen, and it's probably never going to happen. And that's what sucks. Long-term booking. People, I know we get on WWE about long, like not booking long-term. But with the injury rate as high as it is, this is this is the, this is what happens when long-term booking is something WWE and NXT tries to do, and it bites them in the ass because of an injury. It can happen; injuries do happen, but it just happens too often. I can't say anything else about any more about this, but let's talk about tonight's show. 
They had a they had the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic first round matches were all tonight. This did make the show go over nine o'clock uh, past nine o'clock. I'm looking down at DIYs coming out and I'm like, it's just like nine ish. So like it's almost nine o'clock. It's like there's no way they only had like a five six seven match seven minute match with the undisputed era. Just no way. But we had some four matches and like if this was main roster TV. And you wanted to have in four tag four matches for a tag team tournament or a tournament in general, and you wanted to do it within an hour time. These four matches would have been half the time, and most of them were. The NXT they let you, they let these mat they let matches breathe. They let the guys get their work in and their time in, and gives you fantastic matches. Alistair Black and Mika Shade versus Fabian Eichner and Marcel Barthel. I saw somebody on Twitter called Mar- Eichner and Marcel Barthel the European Union. I like that name. Can we give that to them if they haven't already? Fantastic match. Barcel and Eichner are the are a future tag team champions in this division. Mark my words. These guys are fantastic together. In my opinion, Fabian Eichner and Marcel Barcel are guys who, on their own, were doing absolutely nothing and were probably going to do nothing. They weren't going to be factoring into an N- a UK, a, a UK, which they do work both the NXT UK and NXT TV tapings. But I didn't, they wouldn't, like, Marcel Barthel and Fabian Eichner by themselves, even though Fabian Eichner is a former, and I believe he is a former evolved heavyweight champion, on NXT, as single superstars, they were just going to be jobbers to the stars. Getting these guys together as a tag team was the best move that could happen for either of these guys. They are going to be a force for the tag team division going into the rest of 2019. And in my opinion, after whoever beats the War Raiders, I can see Marcel Barthel and Fabian Eichner being the best team, the best, the best chance of winning tag team gold, either in NXT or they could possibly beat whoever the Grizzle Young Vets lose to. Maybe the Grizzle Young Vets lose the titles to Mustache Mountain, and then towards the fall time, Marcel Barthel and Fabian Eichner are in contention for the tag team titles, and they beat the the Mustache Mountain or whoever the tag team champions. I can literally see these guys actually being the first team to win both sets of NXT Tag Team titles. That would be a hell of an accomplishment, and I think that would actually be viable for these guys. Definitely a damn good match. Too much to go into, as we all know. Ricochet and Aleister Black are on their way up to the main roster. Aleister Black actually did his goodbye tour with the NXT um, house shows recently, so he actually did his goodbye speeches wherever they went. So he is definitely on his way up after this series, after this set of tapings or the next set of tapings is over. I don't see I haven't heard anything about Ricochet doing a goodbye tour. He's just it's just um Alistair Black as far as I know. But with these guys being shown prompted on on NX on SmackDown and Raw still, they're both gonna be up on the main roster. And they're both gonna be at Fastlane this coming Sunday. We'll talk about all of that later. No, t- on Friday. Ricochet heads to the top rope, gets kicked in the head, but Thel tosses Ricochet to Eichner for a brain buster. Definitely a beautiful looking combination right there. Like the fact that that takes timing. He's on the top rope, but Thel comes up and ta- takes Ricochet and tosses him. Ricochet falls forward enough to where Eichner is standing right there, catches him into a suplex position, and hits him with a brain buster. Eichner does, hits a double springboard moonsault off for the cover for a two count. Crowd loved that spot, and so did I. I mean, you can if you are a lover of like professional wrestling, that spot, especially if you're one of those people who likes high spots, that was definitely a great spot in this match. Eichner looked for a power bomb, which that match was that that spot was so good that WWE's NXT page tweeted a gif of that exact spot. Definitely, just something that you have to see for yourself. Ricochet is able to cower a power bomb, hits a drop kick, but his momentum is stopped. Black is finally tagged in, hits a springboard double knee strike on Barthel. <coughs> but he sent shoulder first into the ring post, basement drop kick on Black. Eichner looks for a power bomb, gets double stomped. Ricochet clears out Barthel with a suicide dive. Black with a second moon moonstall. Eichner catches him, Black fights out, and clocks him with a black mask for the one, two, three. Alistair Black and Ricochet advance. Marcel Barthel and Fabian Eichner put on a hell of a show. Not this year, obviously. Next year, 2020, if they are still being used in NXT, these two should win the Dusty Road. If, the, if it still happens, they sh- these two should win the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic. If they haven't been Tag Team Champs this year, they should win the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic and go to WrestleMania weekend 
to defeat whoever's the tag team champions going in. So that's what I would do. These guys are going to be some a team to watch. Let's pass it and get ready for the match for the thing is that War Raiders give them a look. Last week we see Caitlyn and Dominic Dajakovic going to a double counter and the finish. Earlier this week at the performance center, Lee is getting his some reps, but Dajakovic comes up and wants to finish things. He's kept away from from some other guys. The two will meet again in two weeks at the next set of tapings, which will be happening next week. Only looking in Danny Birch versus Forgotten Sons, Wesley Blank, and Steve Cutler. I'm this hurts me and this pains me. I'm a fan of Jackson Riker because he was a he was gunner in TNA. And there were, like, not all the time, but there were spots in his career on TNA where Gunner was actually enjoyable to watch. His partnership with James Storm, which, rumor is that James Storm is on his way to NXT. He was backstage at a at the epi- at the night that Ric Flair had his birthday party two, month- two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. He was actually backstage probably visiting friends and visiting Ric Flair because he's probably, he was in Ric Flair's fortune stable in, in, in Impact Wrestling. So, it does bug, it does kill me that you have this Forgotten Sun stable and they are absolutely forgotten. A couple weeks ago when they attacked the Free Profits, they came out and the crowd started chanting, we forgot you, to them. Nobody cares about the Forgotten Sons. And I don't see them, if they advance past the second round and get to the, if they get to the finals and they win the finals and they go on to face the War Raiders, it's not going to be believable that they beat the War Raiders. Nobody in their right mind will see, wants to see will see the War Raiders see the War Raiders as seeing anybody beat the War Raiders. The only team that I think, and it's not even a team right now, the only team that I think in NXT that has a, a legit shot at beating the War Raiders is if you took Matt Riddle and Keith Lee and teamed them up because they are friends. They are definitely friends. You team them up to make the. Um, uh, the bros or the glorious, like the basket, or I don't know what you want to call them, make those two a tag team. Those two could beat the War Raiders because Matt Riddle could beat the, could hammer the, like elbow the fuck out of both of those, and Keith Lee is just amazing. That would be a match I would love to see the War Raiders versus Matt Riddle and Keith Lee. If those two have an actual indie tag team name, someone let me know in the comment section below because I never really got to follow Keith Lee and and Matt Riddle's career. My first exposure to Keith Lee was the World Cup of Wrestling when he faced Ricochet. That was a hell of a match. You should go check that out on World Culture or Defiant Wrestling's YouTube channel if you can find it. This match was eh. Birch is tagged back in, doesn't have much luck as his opponent plants him in the mat. Wilkin tagged in as he chops away on both opponents while holding his back. He throws cover into play, double blockbuster. Birch tags in. High elevation DDT hits cover. Blake breaks it up. Lorcan heads to the top rope, is caught in midair, double stomp, reverse DDT, hits, cover, and that will do it. The Forgotten Sons are your winners. We'll see next week what happens, but eh, don't really care about the Forgotten Sons. Wesley Blake has, this is his second tag team group that he's been in, him, Blake Murphy and Alexa Bliss from years ago was a thing, and this team just doesn't feel like it's any, well, any better than that one was. Taking a break from the NXT North and the NXT Tag Team, the, the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic, we have the Velveteen Dream come out. He comes out, leaps on the table, on, on the commentary table, and gets a mic. Dream just wanted to remind everyone he is the, Nor- the, the, NXT, the NXT North American Champion. He had another reminder, but Matt Riddle's music hits. Well, to be honest, I just came out here to say hi and congratulate you on about your victory. Riddle says, but real talk, he can't help but wonder what the title would look like around his waist. It would look damn good, I'm telling you that. Dream tells Riddle he must really be like, on cloud nine, and, to, and Dream is not his bro. He says the spotlight belongs to him. So he snaps his fingers, and the spotlight focuses on Dream. Io Shirai and Kyrie Sane talk about Bianca Belair. Shirai says Belair is good, but she hasn't beat Baszler like she did. Sane says both. She and Shirai deserve the title, but right now is Shirai's opportunity and she believes her friend can win. Shirai says Belair may be the EST, but Shirai is number one. As we remember, next week will be Io Shirai versus Bianca Belair. The winner faces Shayna Baszler at NXT TakeOver New York. 
So next week, we should have our first official match going into NXT TakeOver New York. Besides, of course, the War Raiders versus the winners of the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic. That will be on the next set of tapings. Do I see a conclusive finish out of Io Shirai and, Shin and, um, and Bianca Belair to see who goes on to face Shayna Baszler? No, I do not. You see the... Four, the three, four horsewomen coming around and just wrecking havoc all over NXT's women's division. I have a feeling they're going to get involved somehow and cost this match and make this match a no contest. What will William Regal do after that? Only, only time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. The Street Profits versus Mustache Mountain. I don't understand why this match was a first round match. These two, I would have had, oh. See, Mustache Mountain versus the Undisputed Era would have been a much better first round match, I think, even over, instead of DIY versus the Undisputed Era. But a simple back, that would be content, like bringing back a few that happened for majority of the first, like for a half of, for the summer of 2018, Mustache Mountain and the Undisputed Era feuded to the point where when people were talking about who's going to be in War Games, Everyone expected another 3v3v3 with British Strong Style Pete Dunn and Mustache Mountain versus the Undisputed Era versus um, Ricochet and the War Raiders. Thank God that didn't happen because I didn't want to see another 3v3v3. I liked what we got this year. Just need to clean a couple things up to make it a better match next year. Or this year. But Street Profits I would have had up against, especially since they took the fall, I would add the Street Profits against the Forgotten Sons for the simple fact is that continues their feud that they've had with the Street Profits and the Forgotten Sons because the Forgotten Sons beat them down. If you were going to have the Street Profits lose a match, I would have had them lose to the Forgotten Sons. But what would you done about Darren Roach and Orny Lorcan? I would have had them take on Aleister Black and Ricochet. I think that would have been a hell of a match. That would have been a hell of a match. And of course, DIY take on Marcel Barthel and Fabian Eichner, who also fell the night. So that would have been my way of doing this, but that's me. Definitely a great fucking match. These two teams are beloved by the NXT universe. I don't know what the Mustache Mountain is like to be heels, but I would think they are, which of course they've been heels with pretty strong style, I believe, in ICW and Progress. So. Let me know if you're a fan of the heel, like, if you know what they are, like, his heels. Because I think they should be turning, I think they should turn heel. But the problem is, the baby face is in NXT UK, so you couldn't do that. But I would love to see a heel version of Mustache Mountain take on, like, go through NXT or NXT UK. Cloud was definitely split from this one. This was definitely a hell of a match. Neck crank on seven, he fights out of it. Big chop, DDT, and both men are down. Bait and Dawkins are both in. Bait with some punches, diving European uppercut off the second rope. Running uppercut released overhead suplex, kick up cover. Ford breaks it up, seven launches forward over the top rope into the floor. Banks and Dawkins with the back and forth strikes, cover seven breaks things up. Ford with a big leap over the top rope to clear out seven. Bait looks for a toddler driver 97, but no. Dawkins with a spine buster, which Dawkins has a pretty good spine buster, I will say that. Ford with a high elevation frog splash. Definitely one of the best frog splashes in the wrestling business today. Today. Not all time, but today. Today. To anybody who wants to think I'm trying to say he has one of the best frog splashes of all time. Cover and bait kicks out. Dawkins puts bait on the shoulders. Seven with a dragon suplex on the apron to clear out forward. Definitely a scary spot. Bait with a solid German suplex on Dawkins. Seven tags in torture rack position. Bait with the double stomp off the top rope for the one, two, three. Must Mask Mountains are your winners. And then we had the main event, which any one of us could be could, could be excited for because it was DIY versus the Undisputed Era. This is a takeover match on any given Sunday. Both men come out, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa all come out. Both come out to their own music, but they stay on the ramp. And it was Johnny Gargano out first, Tommaso Ciampa comes out next, and I believe he put his hand on Tommaso, on his on um, Gargano's shoulder and then pointed in and the DIY music hit. Oh, the nerves. And I'm getting goosebumps again just thinking about it. Just hearing DIY again. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Uh, this, vi this, this video has been popping up all over YouTube, by the way. People showing this actually happening this moment. I didn't watch it. I wanted to actually be ready, like surprised when it happened. But they, you can actually see... 
people putting cell phone videos <coughs> of this moment happening because this is a big moment. People have been calling for DIY to make a reformation for a little while, for a while now, for about three or four months. And it to finally happen, this match is so hard to watch. It's a good match. It's a great match. These two teams, again, are an NXT TakeOver worthy main event. They are. DIY versus Kyle Riley and Bobby Fish is a TakeOver main event worthy match. Don't at me. But to, with the news coming out today, this match is so hard to even watch. But again, Tommaso Ciampa looked great in this match, so I don't know. Like, it didn't feel like he was really doing, like, like his neck didn't seem to be bothering him. I guess the, it's been saying he's been injured for about five weeks, five to six weeks. But you really couldn't tell in this match. He's just maybe that good at his job. That's why he's like, the, he calls himself the greatest sports entertainer of all time. And he's able to do that. But this was definitely a great match. And I just can't even believe that everything that WWE, Vin Triple H, and his team have put together is all going to be for nothing. And that's, and Gargano, Ciampa are probably going to be pissed off, like, Ciampa for sure is probably going to be pissed as fuck because he's been putting, he's, this has been the best run in anybody's career in NXT. This has been the best run in his career for sure. And everything, everything has been leading up to this coming April and it's all going to be for nothing. And it sucks so fucking badly. Chomper tries to suplex Fish to the floor. No luck. Chomper heads to the top rope. Fish follows but gets shoved off. O'Reilly with a distraction. Fish with a kick to the head. Fish heads to the top and nails a Super Michinoku driver. O'Reilly follows up. Cover two goes for right into submission. Fish with a diving headbutt on Chomper. Gargano just shoves Fish into Chomper and O'Reilly to break the hold. Spike DDT and Slingshot TDT on O'Reilly and he somehow kicks out. Fish is cleared out. DIY with the running knee super kick. Meet him in the middle for the one, two, three. DIY are your winners as War Raiders head out, head out to the stage and hold the titles up. Semis are next week. This this episode and next episode are going to be depressing as hell. Because everything that we've seen up to this point has been written as it should be. And it just sucks as somebody who's been watching NXT for so long. I've been watching NXT on a regular, semi-regular basis. And mostly a regular basis since I started doing this. And since NXT, since NXT arrival at least. And to see that the biggest story going into the biggest NXT of all time is NXT TakeOver of all time is going to be scrapped because of a fucking injury. It sucks. It sucks that uh, Tommaso Ciampa is not going to be able to lay out his best masterpiece of work with Johnny Gargano. This could have been a five-star classic. A five-star classic between these two. These two have been held off from wrestling each other since August. Since August that NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, as they should have been. Yes, they teased it back and forth at all. We're gonna, oh, is DIY going to be formed? They did the spot in the cage where in that match against um, with Johnny Gugano and Alice Black where they did the meet him in the middle. It's just... It's just going to be interesting to see what happens next week. I know people don't read spoilers. I don't want to read spoilers because I want to be excited for you guys and give you guys a good review. But this is one of those things that's like, I wonder what we're going to get. I'm sure WWE's the NXT page is going to put the full spoiler list of what happened next week because this is taped up until next week. I'm sure if you want, people are going to be walking, watching over Twitter what's going to happen. I honestly don't... I don't know. The only thing that's going to be for sure taped next next set of tapings is Don Dijakovic versus Keith Lee in the finals of the NX uh, the um, Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. The and probably the and the Go Home Show for NXT Takeover Brooklyn, which is usually just pe show the showcasing superstars that have a are uh, going to be big deals later on, not people now. Uh I. I know I'm sounding awful and everything, but it's just a dark cloud is over NXT right now. And it's not their fault. It's not Tomasa Ciampa's fault. Someone asked um, JD from New York because I was looking through the Ciampa thing. And he's like, did you ever think like two an uh, injury in two and a half years? Or it's like a year and a half, two injuries in a year and a half. Do you think Ciampa's been reckless much? 
That is the dumbest fucking thing you could ever ask somebody. First off, just because somebody's been injured more than one occasion does not mean they're reckless. A, it could be, yes, they could be reckless, but no. And B, it could be that things just fucking happen. You could go off and, like, Tommaso Ciampa does the angel's wings. He, he calls it the, um, uh, the end of, like, the fairy tale ending, the angel's wings. He does that, which is kind of funny because that's the same finisher Manny Rose has been using, but that's neither here nor there. He hits that, and every time he goes up and goes down and does that move, his knees hit the mat. Any fucking time he hits that, especially since he's come, he's been wrestling for about a year on a repaired um, ligament, a, a repaired ACL, every time he hits that, he comes down. There is a like a, a chance that his knee could buckle. Look at what happened with Triple H when he tore his second quad. He went up and did a spine buster onto, I believe, Edge at the second New Year's Revolution. He landed like a normal spine buster, and his knee just buckled. Injuries fucking happen. Anybody who thinks that, oh, Tommaso Ciampa's second injury is because he's been reckless. You're a fucking idiot. The biggest question I have to ask is, nothing, and I've been watching, like, nothing has ever come out that Tommaso Ciampa has suffered an injury, ever. Like, like, recently. They say this has been like five weeks, but there has no, I don't I don't remember seeing anything about Tommaso Ciampa possibly being hurt. No botches or anything happening at an NXT take um event that's usually in the news if something happens like that, there's a possible injury. Nothing has happened and I don't understand why. I don't. I don't understand why. It just makes no sense that the fact that he's had this injury for a good bit and nothing has come out until his almost looking injury with Sheamus two weeks ago, uh, last week, not this past, not yesterday, but last week. Or two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. So I don't know when he got injured. I'm hoping it comes out by Friday so I can talk about it and see what happened. But no, but like, I haven't heard anything, and I don't even think Dave Meltzer said anything about when he actually got injured. We do know, yes, it is a neck injury, which fucking sucks more than anything in this world. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. This has been a terrible, terrible day for NXT. A great show, excellent fucking show. Don't want to say it wasn't a bad show, but everything that happened on this show is absolutely irrelevant tonight. Because we're all wondering what is going to happen with NXT's top prize. What is going to happen with the top match in NXT TakeOver New York? Is it going to be Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano, which everyone is expecting it to end up being? They have, in the next set of tapings, they have two weeks left for NXT. See, the difference is between NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, I believe, and NXT TakeOver New York, is I believe they had about a four-week, oh, wait, no. See, you know, they had a, they had a, like a, they, they had a match that was a triple threat match that could easily take the person out and just make it a one on one match, is what they did. This time, the match hasn't even been announced yet, and they've already shot an angle for this match to happen, and it's not gonna be, and it's like, what do they do now? They have two weeks. Are you gonna throw it, like, because you have also the NXT, the, um, Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Finals happening, this week, no, not this week, but in two weeks, or three weeks, whenever they do it, what is the plan going to be? Are we going to have a six-man tag, a six-man a six man ladder match? Johnny Regano versus Adam Cole versus Ricochet versus Aleister Black versus, like, Matt Riddle versus Keith Lee, something like that? I don't know. They have two, they have this week to think, they have this week to come up with something, which I'm sure Triple H or somebody can come up with something. And then when they get to tapings next week, they have to have a plan. If this was main roster, I'd be afraid, afraid of what that plan is going to be. But this isn't main roster. It's just, we have a lot to think about. And I hope we have a great conclusion coming up. Because this is going to be a great, this, has, this is going to need to be the best NXT show ever. And it just took a huge fucking hit. I'm going to get out of here and... <sighs> Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. I like to thank each and every one of you for watching any one of my videos. 
listening to what I have to say. If you've done that, thank you. I do this just right now for because I love doing this. I hope to make this a career and something to do because I just love talking wrestling. I love talking about things. Maybe we can add gaming back to the channel. I do see my one of my most viewed videos over the last two years has been something I did back in 2017. I wish I could still do that right now, but the circumstances I'm in right now, I can't. But hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Hit find me on Twitter at the Franz. Hit that follow button over there. Find me on Twitch.tv slash defrance zero eight. Hit that follow button over there. And I will see you guys on Friday for the NA for the fast lane preview or the fast lane predictions. And then Saturday for the unscripted episode. I believe we're in episode 60. And then of course Fast Lane Review on Sunday. Until then, my name is Afrance. I will see you guys later.